Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm still catching up on new releases from last month, so this week I'm taking a look at Witchblood, a 2D Metroidvania platformer on the Gear VR. Witchblood was released on June 3rd, 2017, and is currently available on the Oculus Store for $7.99. It's developed by Hidden Path Entertainment and is published by Oculus Studios. Hidden Path is an independent studio with about 40 industry professionals working on both independent and publisher-funded projects. Witchblood is also available on the Oculus Rift, but this review deals only with the Gear VR version. Witchblood drops you into the role of a young woman named Clara. Some bad guys bust into your house, kill your father, and you set off to figure out why and get revenge. The actual gameplay takes the form of a aforementioned Metroidvania-style platformer. There's a lot of exploring, finding new upgrades and abilities, then backtracking and using those to access previously inaccessible areas. Instead of having the scenery scroll past you, the game is composed of stationary, diorama-like scenes where you do your platforming and monster slaying. The scenes are modeled in full 3D with great depth, but the action is purely 2D. It feels like you're watching little action figures come to life, then stabbing them to death, and the overall effect is very appealing. The game is pretty big overall, taking about 4-5 to five hours to pass, and quite a bit longer to uncover all secrets and upgrades. The game is composed of a lot of these stationary scenes, but thankfully the map system is pretty damn good. Not the map in the menu, that's really too tiny to be useful for navigating. No, it's the map that's painted on the rest of the wall surrounding the active scene that you'll be using most of the time. Just by turning your head you can easily see enough to navigate your way through the labyrinthine world to pick up that weapon you missed three scenes back. If you're watching this video then you've probably already asked yourself, what's the point of a 2D platformer on a VR system? Well, ultimately, there really isn't one. The mechanics of this game could have just as easily been done on a computer monitor or TV screen. VR is supposed to be about immersion, and 2D platformers aren't an especially immersive genre. But I will say that Witchblood makes better use of VR compared to the other mobile VR platformers I've played, which include Kali, Battle Planet, and Gunsight. At times you want to reach out and touch the tiny, deadly figures, and I'll say again that the painted map is both novel and very useful. Witchblood is designed to be played with a gamepad, plain and simple. The Gear VR motion controller does technically work in that all commands have been mapped to its buttons. But this game is a platformer, and as such requires fairly accurate control of your character. While all the commands are accessible with the motion controller, using the touchpad as an analog stick never feels precise enough, especially when you have to also click it during movement. Maybe with enough practice it becomes second nature, but if you have a Bluetooth gamepad around, you'll switch to that in a matter of minutes, and it's well worth it. When you do use a gamepad, the controls are pretty familiar. The movement is controlled by the analog stick, the D-pad selects spells, and the other buttons handle jumping and attacks. This control method feels natural and works beautifully, though I do feel like a digital D-pad would be more precise for some of the jumping sections in the tower and library. But that's just my personal preference. The graphics and effects in Witchblood are among the best you'll see on the Gear VR. From the towns to the forest to the caves and crypts, the graphics are bright, colorful, and a sight to behold. The polygon count is relatively low, but the textures are beautiful, and each scene comes to life before your eyes. All animations are smooth with no visible stutter, but I have seen rare instances of textures getting a little glitchy. I will say that the graphics don't look quite as clear in the Gear VR as they do in the trailer video. Everything seems a bit blurry no matter how much I adjust it. I know the Gear VR is capable of more clear visuals, just look at the high-resolution environments of Daedalus. Maybe the Rift version looks better and the Gear VR version had to be dialed back for performance reasons? It's not a deal-breaker and you do sort of forget about it once you start playing, but you will notice it initially. The sound design in Witchblood is great. The music is wonderfully atmospheric and the enemies that inhabit the scenes manage to have clear and distinct sounds without getting annoying. The voice acting is very good as well. It's not winning any Oscars, but it definitely conveys the story and emotion of the characters well enough. Your character's voice in particular is very clear and she'll often drop a hint or suggestion when you gain a new power, so you'd do well to actually listen to the dialogue. And again, like the enemy sounds, nothing gets repetitive or annoying. As expected, comfort isn't an issue here. There's no camera movement and so no motion sickness. As much as I can say that this is a great way to experience a 2D platformer, I can't really call this game immersive. You look around at the scene in the map but you're still just looking at a very big screen. That doesn't mean it's not a good game, but I know it's not why most people bought a Gear VR. So I think you all know where this review ends. We have a very well-made 2D platformer that, in itself, is a lot of fun, and it's been released on virtual reality systems. 
It's challenging and satisfying, and I really enjoyed it while it lasted. But it's not immersive, and ultimately I think that's what will dictate your choice. If you're after a really good platformer, Steam has a crazy amount, not to mention the game consoles. And, as I said, there are far more immersive games on the Gear VR and Rift. So where does that leave Witchblood? I'll close the video by saying experiencing this 2D platformer in VR is definitely a different and more atmospheric experience than just playing it on a screen. But you'll have to decide whether that's worth pressing the buy button. Thanks for watching! Got something to say about this video, an opinion of the game itself, or VR in general? Leave a comment to let me know what you think. And if you like what you saw and you want to see more of this, hit the like and subscribe buttons. Remember, there's a new video every week, and be sure to check out my other reviews as well. Hope to see you again soon. Bye for now.